We're live here on the 18th green at uh, Don Pedro Victoria Golf Course with the defending champion, Padraig Harrington. Faddy, how's it feel to be back here? Yeah, it's always nice to come back as a defending champion. It doesn't happen as often as you would like it to happen. Uh, obviously puts a bit more pressure on you in that week. There's a little bit more focus, a little bit more stress in it. Uh, I have defended tournaments, so I'm, I'm happy enough that I can do it and just try and make the best job of it as I can. And obviously, uh, in the last round last year, you, you, you played a lot of good short shots. You hold, the, hold out from the bunker, you hit that, you chipped in from, from the fringe, and obviously you got up and down at the 72nd hole uh, to win by one. How important was, was your short game in that? Well, I always live by my short game, there's no doubt about that. And uh, that's a big advantage when you're under pressure coming down the stretch because you're always going to miss one or two more greens on the back nine at the end of a tournament. So having a good short game, it plays into my hands when there is a bit more stress in the tournament. So uh, yeah, I, I missed 18, I'm gonna recreate this shot here. I had a hit a safe shot off the tee into the right rough, avoided the water, and then I hit another safe shot with a flyer up the right, probably because I knew I could get it up and down. Uh, you know, that's the beauty of having a good short game. You're, you can, you don't have to take some shots on if you don't want to, or you can be more aggressive and not fear missing. So pretty straightforward shot. You, you can't can't tell you how easy this shot turned out to be. Uh, it's about 25 yards. It was a very neutral lie, so there was nothing funny about the lie. It was just sitting nicely in the middle of the grass. It wasn't sitting up or anything, but it was just as neutral as can be. If the if you can look down here at this lie, this ball is just going to come out a little bit soft out of a lie like this. But if if it was sitting in this, this would be terrible with the grain going against me. I'd have to hit that awfully hard to get the ball to the hole. Uh, it was just sitting nice and neutral, nice plain lie. Again, as I said, I was chipping over a slope to an upslope, which again, very easy shot because if I chipped it anyway short, it's hitting the downslope and running up to the pin. And if I chip it a little bit long, it's pitching into the upslope and stopping. So uh, I did use a lob wedge, even though I was playing a pitch and run, I back footed a little bit, towed it in. One thing you've got to do on these shots is actually really, you really got to stay in your shot. Oh, I've done it again. Actually nearly, oh, oh. I've actually hit it a foot closer this time. I, it was, a, I left myself a three footer. We set up some tee pegs. Uh, that's only two foot this year. That's a lot easier than the one I had last year. You still had a few feet left to go, like you say, last year. That was a, a clutch putt as well, wasn't it? It was three feet, but it was outside the hole. Uh, you know, it was the end of the day. You're under a lot of pressure. Yeah, I, I had to hit a really good putt there. Uh, and, and you know, I suppose three footer. Nobody wants to miss that either. So yeah, you're, you're certainly feeling it, which is a nice place to be. That's what you want. A couple of people asking here for the for the sort of amateur. What what sort of club do they want to be uh, using around the greens mainly? Would you say for consistency? <sighs> whatever they practice with, whatever they get used to. So as pros, we tend to use a lot of lob wedges because that's more fun to practice with, more interesting. We do a lot of work with it. When I played my amateur golf, I used a huge amount of eight irons, nine irons, pitch and runs, because the golf courses lended themselves to that. I think with the professional golf, the greens are firm, they're fast. Most of the chip shots, you're just chipping it on the edge of the green and trying to, you know, trying to stop it, to be honest. So we do a lot of practice for our lab wedge, so we do tend to reach for it more often than not. So as an amateur, you know, you gotta experiment and find the club for you. I will say, if you can put it, put it. Always use a putter if you can. Liam was asking, um, in a bunker, wrist hinge or not? He's heard different opinions. Oh, uh, I've got to say, it, you wouldn't be able to play a good bunker shot if you didn't hinge your wrists. Now saying that, I don't try and hinge my wrists, I just don't try not to hinge them. So, Liam, definitely wrist, wrist break in your backswing, but you know, you don't need to add it in, just don't take it out. And one of the, the shots we, uh, we mentioned that you hit in the last round uh, last year was this uh, was this belly wedge. Um, there was some debate in the commentary team, I remember, of whether or not you, you meant it, but I think anyone who's watched you chip over the years sort of imagine that you probably had. Yeah. Um, is it a shot you play quite a lot? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, it is a shot I play, and, and the great thing about it is, you know, other guys use hybrids, other guys maybe chip and run. It's pretty standard for me, I'm used to it. Uh, I don't put a huge amount of practice into it. I hit the odd one every now and again, just to get a feel for it. Uh, it takes out a huge amount of, error out of the shot so you, you once you get used to hitting a belly wedge again it's always from from fringe not too far away usually if the grain is against you uh, so if the grass was lying into me against me here i'd be more likely to use a belly wedge because trying to chip that i could easily duff it 
and uh, going to go to the little pitch mark again here about 15 to well, 18 feet again you just graze the top of the grass you're trying to hit the middle of the ball use a foot and stroke I will say you got to trust it and keep your head still as usual I haven't hit, hit the greatest one there, but it's 18 inches from the hole, it's stone dead. If I chipped it, I don't think I'd chip it in any more often, but I know for sure if I was chipping this, I'd hit a lot more to four and five feet, where I just quite, don't quite get the contact out of the out of a poor lie. And that was the one last year where it really got you sort of in the mix as a challenge for the title, wasn't it? So Yeah, you know, obviously the bunker shot was the one on, on uh, number 11, I hold out. I hit my first bad iron shot of the day, I hit it in the bunker, you know, this is the first sort of kink in the armour and uh, I hold the bunker shot short side and you know the, it it came from nowhere I did hit a good bunker shot but like it was turned a five into a three and, and right from then I knew this was my tournament cool uh, someone's asking in your younger days how many hours would you dedicate uh, in a day to short game well in my younger days I went to school <laughs> I went to college so you know there wasn't that much time uh, and, and I think a lot of people play their best golf when they have a limited time to practice because they're, they tend to put the right practice in then. So I used to finish school at four o'clock, I'd go up and hit a few balls. Even, even if it was dark at 4.45, I'd still go and hit shots. In terms of practice, I played a lot. I didn't have a practice ground. Uh, we had a small chip and green. So yeah, I, I spent some hours chipping, but I spent more time chipping on the golf course. So I'd go out and play. I, I, I know this isn't always easy for people, but I'd find a, a, an interesting chip on the golf course, something that caught my imagination. And I'd play it until I could succeed at it. And uh, you know, I, I'd often be doing that at nine o'clock at night when it's just getting dark, I, you know, when the golf course gets quiet and there's people off. And so I, I never subscribe to people allocating time to practice. Uh, you know, you can hit thousands of balls in time, but you know, are they going to be quality shots? Are they going to be interesting? Are you going to be engaged? So I, I'm a much better, you know, when you're fresh and you're ready and you want to do it, do it. And if you're not, you know, go do something else. Uh, that's why it's always good, as I said, for the young guys, uh, you know, to be in college, to be in school, to have a, a second string to your bow, because it really does, when you get to play your golf, you, you, you love it. Whereas a lot of guys who go full time at golf too early, uh, they burn out very quickly. Tony's asking what, what, what club are you using there for chipping I, I'm the using a, just a 58 degree wedge, uh, just chipping around here. Again, as I said earlier, uh, this is old school wedge. A lot, as pros, we tend to get lazy. Uh, we don't, I don't necessarily have the time to, to practice all the short, short shots I would have practiced when I was a kid, you know, eight irons, chip and runs and that. Because of the conditions we play in, generally nearly every shot is a, is a little dunt with a lob wedge or, or a flop shot with a lob wedge. So uh, I will step down and use my sand wedge and pitching wedge, yes, but I don't practice them as much. Again, usually because the practice ground is too busy, too many golf balls, you can't yeah. start hitting pitching runs up a green if, if, uh, you know, if it's covered in golf balls. Uh, your namesake, Padraig Lynch, uh, is asking what's, what's your favourite short game or chipping drill? I, uh, oh. Again, I'm always looking for something interesting, so always trying to put a bit of a competition on it. Uh, I would never hit chip shots unless there was, I try not to anyway pour a bucket of balls out and hit chip shots. Uh, always try and move around. The best practice is to find somebody uh, to compete with. Shane Lowry, I do that a lot with in the States. Uh, Paul Dunn in, in Europe. Uh, we go to the chip and green and we just play a competition up to 10 points. Uh, puts a little bit of a forefoot on the line and, and that keeps your interest. All practice is about being interested, being engaged. Uh, really the last thing people, and people always want to do this, the last thing you want to be thinking of practice is time. It, that's a terrible word to use when practicing. Uh, can you be engaged? Are you interested? Uh, it's not about hitting a number of golf balls and it's certainly not about putting in hours. Yeah. A couple of people are asking for a quick, couple of quick de demonstrations of shots, so maybe if we just grab that ball. Um, obviously a lot of people asking to see a, lob, uh, see a flop shot and then also someone was asking if you have not, don't have much green to work with um, how would you change your technique in, in, in that instance? Well every shot is, it, every particular shot depends on, on the lie, uh, you know the stance I suppose slope wise, how much green, how firm, how fast. So I suppose a, a covering a lob shot and, and, a, and a short shot again a lot depends on the lie. Uh, you put me on a down slope here, so this ain't so easy. Usually, you never fight the slope. 
that would be one thing. So if you're on a down slope, your shoulders have to go with the slope. If you're on an up slope, your shoulders have to go with it. So again, you'll see here I'm leaning in. It's very easy on a down slope to go under it. So I'm actually not going to open up the club face as much as I would if I was on an up slope. So a little bit open. And just focus on my target. And then I knife it in the water. These two. See? Lack of preparation. <laughs> okay. Do that again. Okay. Bit too good of eye. I'm just going to flap it in front of me. Just like so. You know, I know people keep asking, do you want the most difficult shot? Uh, you know, get the basic shot first. And, you know, if you want to hit a basic chip shot, you've got to make sure that your center of gravity, your sternum, your weight is left at a golf ball at impact. The one place you never ever want to do when you're hitting a chip shot is get any weight on your right foot if you're a right handed golfer. So if you sway back into your right side and hang back, you've got no room to get at the golf ball. You've got to stay forward on your left side, which will get your arms nice and steep, and then you can work the club head under with your hands if you're that standard. But you must get left at the golf ball in order to hit a good chip shot. And maybe the last one for us to see, um, could we have a look at a, a flop, flop shot and you know, well, where, where would you use that and how would you set up for that? That was a flop shot. That oh, was a short, short flop short shot. Yeah. Flop shot. It's, like, <laughs> it's the exact same thing. Here we go here. You know, normal. It, it's a wider stance. It's, you know, I was told as a kid, for every degree you open up your stance, you open up the club face a degree. So if my club's 45 degrees open, my stance is. I'm now a little bit more squarer as a pro. But anyway, open, big swing. So it's almost a full swing, if not a full, complete oh, full swing. Have, yeah, I'd hit a, off now the rough like that, nice lie, I'd hit a pretty full swing. Uh, again, it's about experimenting. The one thing you don't want to be doing, you can't be on your right side. Now I will say on a, on a big flop shot, you might be 50-50. On a normal, a normal chip shot, you might be 95% on your left side. On a flop shot it is more even but you know you might need to work on staying in the shot keeping your head down for a certain amount of time i don't have to think about that i've i've figured that out in my career so i'm not trying to keep my head down or anything like that i'm just purely thinking about where i'm going uh, but as an amateur you might need to start with that staying in the shot again mostly it's going to be about your weight transfer probably start about 60 40 for a flop shot weight on your left side and stay there you don't need to transfer your weight when you're hitting a chip shot and on a regular chip shot, I go 99% of your weight on your left side. If you can just get it all over there, you'll chip the ball much better and you'll be able to push the ball forward and use the full loft of the club, club head. Whereas bad chippers put their weight on the right side, the ball goes back and they end up with you know, no loft and nowhere to go really when they're chipping. And just a couple of last ones. Uh, someone's asking if you're going to win the 50 euros back from Paul Dunn this week. It was 100 euros. It was twice I lost to him. Uh, he's not here. So I'm not going to win it back. Uh, yeah, but I actually, because of the bet I had with Paul, Paul last week, I actually made the cut because I had a putt to win on the nine hole match on the ninth hole on Tuesday. And it turned out in the tournament on Friday, I had the two putt going up the same line on the, on the hole. And I 100% two putt because I'd already hit a putt where I was engaged, where I was interested, where I was trying. And that's why we have these little bets. It's to must make a little forfeit. It's just to make sure that you're paying attention and you're interested. And as I said, it paid off. I made the cut because of it. Yeah. And lastly, uh, obviously defending this week. How are you feeling going into the into the week? It seems like it's quite a relaxed uh, event. A lot of families around. Um, does that help help on the course just to stay stay calm and enjoy it? This is a very popular event amongst the players. Uh, we've just come off a run of some terrible weather. Uh, you know, it was cold and wet last week in, in Rotterdam, so everybody likes getting down here. Their families travel, uh, accommodation is easy. Everything about this place is easy. So yeah, a lot of people are relaxed. A uh, little bit more stress on me, obviously, as I'm defending, but uh, I do enjoy it here. Uh, so I, I wouldn't say I'm in great shape right now. I have another 24 hours to get my head in the game, and hopefully I will. Great, thanks very much for your time, Paddy. Have a good week. Thank you.